What's going on everybody? This is an episode from the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast. Do you like podcasts and you want to see the full podcast? Make sure you check out the No Gimmicks Needed Wrestling Podcast on all your podcast platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, among many others. But you're listening to the episode right here on YouTube, so make sure you hit that like button in below and make sure you hit the subscribe button to NC Studios and NC Level Up for all your gaming needs. This is the Nerd Coalition. Enjoy the show. A couple weeks ago, last week AEW had their 200 episode. But the week before that, uh, I was watching AEW, and there was this one person in the audience that had this sign that said, "Book the women's division better." Okay. That's all the sign said. The fact that they don't be taking signs over there, they ain't yeah. cold, they ain't got hit to the game yet. So, what happened is recently. There was this, this wrestler by the name of Lefisto, mm-hmm. who uh, became an indie wrestler. She's actually had some matches with Dark uh, or AEW Dark and things like that. And she decided to, uh, she, on July 27th, she sent out a tweet that read this. It said, It's cute how people blame booking for a bad women's division, talent with too much power, talent. Uh, degrading each other, talent, trash talking uh, potential, employees so they never get in as soon as they walk in it starts here, the only one the, the one you call effing French Canadian asshole people on Max are assuming like well she talking about Britt Baker is she talking about like, allegedly that was Goldust okay, they well, call her, that said all French Canadians are assholes, yeah. allegedly so uh, then it, it caused it started causing you know a lot of people. We know how these things happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, then she decides to go. She has an interview uh, on Fightful, uh, Fightful.com, to clarify her tweet and detail her AEW experience. And I want to read what it has here. I don't know where to start, but it's really something that has been bothering me for a while. It's been over a year that I had that dark match at AEW. There are so many things that happened that night. Things that I heard from other women that are working there, that had tryouts there, that were extras, as well as men who are currently employed. Of course, I know people want names and everything, but I'm not willing to give the names of people involved in my story. But of course, if anybody did confide in me in something I can share the story but out of respect I'm not going to share the name of someone who doesn't want to lose the job basically or is looking for a job basically just just if, if you pay me enough I'll tell you yeah they, they trusted me enough to say you you can tell it but not the name I'm, I'm not going to do it where to start so she talks about some events that took place uh so they start talking talk, talk to the fans back in April 6, 2022. They had some tapings in Boston. And she worked at uh, Dark Elevation Match. For those who don't know, AEW had two YouTube shows. They had AEW Dark and they had Dark Elevation. Mm-hmm. Both of those shows are gone now. Okay, yes. No, no need for them. They got right They got to say they have other shows on TV. Got Dark it. Elevation Sucked. is not even in the same place, right? That's the one that's in, that's the one that's in Orlando. Yeah, that's that's the, that's the one that they, they, they had, that's the one that was the big show was doing a commentary on. So she was backstage at the show in Orlando. I don't know if if, if uh, Atlanta or they was this right here is saying that they had some tapings in Boston, Massachusetts. So there, there have okay. been okay. Yeah, there have been things kind of like how if you go to a, a Raw show, how they used to tape tape main event before Raw. So a lot of those, so a lot, lot of I know those like for so it must have been dark because I know dark and dark elevation. One of them is like at where TNA used to be at, and then the other one is before or after Rampage, after uh, Dynamite. Dynamite. It could have been dark elevation. Cause that was the that was the newest show, where yeah. dark was the original show. But uh, she was teaming with uh, uh, Emi uh, Sakura and the Bunny against Ruby Soho, Anna J, and Sky Blue. So, there's so much stuff here. 
there's no way I can sit there and read everything that she, she wrote or the transcripts from this whole interview. I can't. Did she? Did, did, you, did you read the whole tweet? Because I feel like there was another, there's a follow-up tweet. Because I, I have to go, I'm going to go and see if I can find uh-huh. um, all of the women who responded. Well, Let's now, see. the, the woman that responded, responded after the interview that w- was posted on FIFO. Mm-hmm. Basically coming at her for, for, for the thing she said. Uh, she does mention that her and Ruby Soho had, had, had uh, a couple of matches back in the Indies and then all of a sudden there has been, you know, a little bit of beef between them. She felt as though that uh, when they was going over their match, she heard her talking to uh, Dustin Runnels, who you know is Gold Dust, mm-hmm. or you know Dustin Rhodes, how you want to put it. Uh, when it, while, while she was in the bathroom, but then when she came out, they stopped talking and then Ruby left. And then uh, Dustin came up with the whole French Canadian co- comment, yeah, uh, along those lines. And she basically in this interview. Uh, was talking about her experience in the back of the locker room yeah. of how they got these factions, they got these cliques, and there's these, these, these politics, and how uh, Ruby Soho, maybe she had, could, could be like a locker room leader back there, mm-hmm. uh, was not making it any easy, easy uh, for her back there. Um, even, even this part right here, she says. I'm going in to meet Sean Dean. Really nice guy. They give me a pass. The extras, uh, the extras change in the shower where the women were. I'm sitting around waiting. I really want to meet Tony Khan. That's the thing. The match is cool, but I really want to meet Tony because of the coaching job. The first person I see is the bunny. I say hi. She looked at me. What are you doing here? I'm hoping to get something. She, she goes away, comes back a bit later, and asks me the same question. I hope to have a coaching job. It's a little chaotic. People are running around. I go into the ladies locker room in silence. There is Ruby, Bunny, and Tony, Tony Storm. Sitting together on one side, they look at me, no words. And it feels really weird. I see Mercedes Martinez, happy to see me. Jay Cargill is doing her thing. The young girls, every everyone is separated. I get the same question. What are you doing here? I got the call to be an extra and meet with Tony. For uh, from there, I don't know. It doesn't feel good right away. I see QT, QT Marshall. When I'm, when, when am I going to meet Tony? I don't know. He's busy. Walk, walk around, mingle. Real I'm quick, on, huh? Real quick, yeah. Real go quick, ahead. real quick. I don't know this story. I don't know how this is. I'm just saying right now. I don't see the problem at the moment. I mean, I think she's just saying that she felt uncomfortable. It, I don't think that there was anything that happened. Well, no, because because honestly, with, with her experience of how she talks about how cold the the uh, locker room was, or uh, when, when she talks about uh, she was there, there was a point where she was trying to go for a try for WWE and Ruby Soul from being over there called over there to talk about how bad of a person she is to kind of try to sabotage her her trying to get some kind of spot over in WWE uh, she she uh, put that out there uh, she she, uh, she talks about like I'm, I'm going down to try to pull out the actual I didn't have time to pull out all the very important stuff that was uh, part, part of this transcript because it's a full on transcript from that podcast which or that interview which is about an hour long mm-hmm. that that happened um but when she she does talk about she, when she walks around she uh talked to mark henry she met dusty rose christian he talked about me and train with his daughter by the time it's really it's almost five i go to see mercedes uh do we know what we're doing what's going on she was like we always know at the last minute time goes by i see the card and the first wrestler who said they wanted to wrestle me, she said they won't let me. That sucks because I really like her. And I end up in a six woman uh, and they kept cutting our time. I see people complaining everywhere because they're not on the card. They come, they came to Boston, they're not wrestling, it's really chaotic. So right now, 
what some of the things that she's talking about is basically how chaotic or how uh, the women are not getting much respect in the back. And let's just be real here. I do not personally think from just watching the shows that Tony Khan cares about women's wrestling. I don't, no. think, it's a, I don't think it's a priority to him. I don't think that many people care about women's wrestling. Period. That is, I can I'm agree just with that. Being, if we're just I, I, being I frank, in most promotions, in the universes of the, like fandom, yeah, I don't think a lot of people care about women's wrestling. Women could be legit wrestlers. Women could be divas. Either way, people don't care. Yeah. It's unfortunate because it's a lot of women out here who are great at what they do and just folks don't be fucking with women's sports, period. For real, for real. And it's trash. Uh-huh. But to kind of sum the, 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 this whole thing up, and she talks about how the match was cut, the, the, the six women's match was cut, and how uh, you know the different things that she had to go through during the matchup and things like that, and uh, how she still was like right here in the back after the match. She still waited to see Tony Khan. She's like, I, I changed. I'm waiting. Uh, there is, uh, there is still Tony. Uh, the match forgot about. Uh, you're here for coaching. I go to wrestle. I never know for a few years, and he's like, so how was it? It was short. Yeah, they don't really watch our matches here. I've been doing uh, Chris Benoit moves for the past month, and no one even knows. They don't care. Where's the structure? And pretty much do what you want. I'm not saying that in a good way. I sit down, watch the show, and I wait. I see Sammy Guevara with his girlfriend. They were going out to the car before coming back. And it's chaotic, and there is literally people sitting at one point, and they talk shit to each other. I'm fucking, I, I'm with fucking children. Now, we've heard women come out before and say stuff like this. That was the first thing I was going to say, because yeah. y'all was definitely giving Big Swole all the smoke yeah. because y'all didn't like her. Yeah. And, and like told said, her she was lying and blowing the shit out of proportion and blah 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 blah. And she has said something about the structure and the clicks in the bank. Then the Rosa came out and said something about the structure and the clicks on the bank because they, they her and Britt Baker was having that little beef uh, for a while. It was it uh, last year? I think it was, or maybe in 2021. I'm not necessarily sure. The year I think it was last year. Uh, when that was going on, especially when she had her little run with the uh, with the AW Women's Championship, and now we're, we're here. So, when this interview was done, it don't take. Uh, uh, I think the next day, it's like Tony Khan says out the firing squad. Sure did. Because everybody from the AEW locker room starts tweeting out conventionally at like the same time. About AEW has you know respected locker room in the back. They are uh, when it comes to our woman, we talk and we help each other out. Ty Muller comes out and says, you know, she she's at a high risk pregnancy, and they make her feel very comfortable in the back, which got nothing to do with the problem that we're talking about right here. Also, did she come out and say she was pregnant already, or have I just not been caring? Yeah, not been caring. She's okay. been like, she's big now. Yeah, okay. She, yeah. yeah. Cool. Uh, it looked a lot like damage control. It looked like we got a bad review. All y'all go on Yelp and say something nice. Y'all, yeah. everybody go on glass door and say that that employee that we fired was lying. It, like that's what it looked like. Yeah, and it looks like that she is uh, like on the on the verge of getting blackballed because of her speaking out about the issues that's been going on in AEW. Now, for me personally, and like I said, there are better breakdowns of this situation with a lot of other uh, wrestling journalists and podcasters and stuff like that because we are not breaking it down to the fullness of tea. And I'm sitting there saying that I have not pulled, you know, everything from the transcript that I have should have pulled. But I'm just going to let anybody know that right now. But to give my opinion on the gist of the things that's going on, 
I do think there is issues back there in that locker room. And Tony Khan don't like criticism at all. I think they want to make it look... They're all about appearances. They're all about the optics of... I mean, but who is it? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yes, yeah. and that's how it usually looks, especially in a corporate environment. You don't want it getting out that it's a, um, a hostile work environment or it's not a happy place to work. Nobody is going to... Like, no company is going to have some everybody be happy. However, if there are fundamental issues with your company culture, that's a different story. Yeah. So, uh, now, now, Prime, as you know, we watch AW, we watch a lot, a lot of wrestling stuff like that. What is your necessarily take? Like, do you feel as though Tony Khan in the back is not being fair to the women? Because, you know, I have heard you mention before a lot of times of how he has booked his, you know, women's champions. Uh, I will say, I don't... I think he, he doesn't see it as a priority, but... As far as her day uh, in AEW, I'm not. To me, that that don't sound as hateful. Probably somebody who's like backstage. Like, that don't sound bad to me. Maybe just because I know what goes on in, in some instances. But I, I don't know. Like to me, right now, it kind of don't sound bad, in my opinion. Other than the the, the the match getting cut short, other than that, nothing sounds out of the ordinary to me. I do know that once again, I have not had all of the except you know the facts and those pulled up right in front of me. I can As go a, through the. I finally found like the tweets and stuff. Okay. But this, this, this is my this my humble opinion. I feel like going into a new environment where you don't know anyone in any situation Mm -hmm. more than likely it's going to be cold and it's going to seem like people are in clicks that's just how unfortunately how life works yeah Yeah. um however talking about how like the structure of women's wrestling over there and how there's not much um care or thought put into it is problematic now, depending on um, if you've only been there for one day, do you really know what's what's going on? But if what she's saying is true, and the, she's hearing from people who work here all the time, like this is their primary promotion, and they're saying, "Oh well, you know, we don't get no time, girl. They don't care about us." That's a different story. <laughs> well, it depends on who it is now. So and that's what she's not gonna say, but because I'm saying like if it's like you know if it's like somebody that's higher than I I would get it if it's like somebody like out the bunny I'm like I don't obviously know. you're not obviously you not gonna be on the card that's why you obviously your matches get cut short so but I also this is one thing I feel like we skipping over the part where they're just like they don't care about what we do out there they tell us where how when our match is coming up five minutes before it happens and then nobody watches the match um, and and we go on about our day. That's the problem. That's a yeah, problem. I think that's, I, I, I think, even though I, I'm not trying to, you know, I feel like that's just for certain people because I'm going to be honest, like, some matches I do feel like in AEW, Dark and all them, I feel like he just has matches just to have women on the show because they're like, Emmy Sakura, like Billy Starks, I don't know, nobody, people know who they are, but like they don't, they not finna get no job, one for like, I don't, they not finna get no full time, they even contract, so it's but, like. Uh, yeah, but, but uh, even, even with that though, but look at the, the state of the women's division now. Yes, yes. Like even look at, at it now, it's like, where's Red Velvet, where's, where's Layla Hirsch, where is. Layla Hirsch just came back. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was like, uh, where, where are some of these? I, I barely see Nyla Rose. Where's Rio? Well, see, and because Nyla Rose is <coughs> one of the people who uh, tweeted. Up. So here's the thing: Taya Valkyrie, which was which is odd to me, right? Uh-huh. Because she definitely just came out. I don't, I don't have a link to the article or anything or like the transcripts from the interview. But she definitely came out and talked about how she had been bullied and people talk about how she was fat and 
why she rests and she can't rest on them. And I just can't imagine if you literally just talked about that last week that whether you agreed or not, unless it's like I want to, I want this to look good because I want to keep my job I just got. Why would you come out and kick somebody while they down? It this is the experience they had. So let's see. She said this narrative that all the AEW women hate each other is quite frankly annoying. I've been there for five months and everyone from the second I walked in that building has been nothing but supportive, hyping each other up and badass. Stop pinning women against each other. It's getting old. Now, again, she did say it was clicky. There was some, you know, backstage politics and all that. But again, none of these things address the core issue of the workplace culture around women's wrestling. It's all, but we like each other. We love each other. That's that. Yeah, is what I'm getting from these tweets. And then um, uh, Sammy Guevara's, um, what is she? Wife, baby mama. I'm yeah, not sure. Wife. 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 Okay. And then she retweeted that and said, all this, all of this, I never saw a group like ours. It makes me sad that people try to say shit they don't know anything about. Keep talking because we will keep working hard and shining. Um, Renee Young was like, we have an incredible women's division that I know what I said. They all look out for and support each other. I've never seen. I've never seen it be anything other than a safe space for a bunch of kick-ass women that all want to see each other and all of AEW shine to their full potential. Women hating women is a real dusty take. Um, Madison Rain. Oh, Lord. That's, that's probably every my girl. Every Wednesday, I leave my daughter and husband and get on a plane. Every Wednesday, I fly somewhere hundreds of miles away from my dad. Who, about Josh Matthews? Who is back? This, this is my thing. I was like, he... This had to be, and this is no shade to her tweet because I don't uh, want it to seem like I'm taking it lightly that, that she's going through this personally. But she says, Every Wednesday, I leave my daughter and husband and get on a plane. Every Wednesday, I fly somewhere hundreds of miles away from my dad who is battling stage four cancer. And every Wednesday, I walk into a locker room full of women who motivate, uplift, and genuinely enjoy one another. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> I just I feel like did you did did you put that in there so people would be like, oh, that's a shame. That that doesn't seem to have anything to do with the. It, it's 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 almost like the thing like when when you're trying to make excuses like it's like we we're trying to tell the slave that they're enslaved. You know, the 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 top is Tony Khan. He lists all the jobs that he do, but this is his responsibility. And first of all, that if any woman, if any woman at all is feeling like they are being attacked or they don't feel comfortable or there is just some kind of politics that's happening towards them, and if this is your locker room, you got to maintain that this is not happening or you got to go let people know that, hey, Instead of trying to blackball them or the people that stand up, you send you send them home. Uh, I think I heard reports about that. The, the, uh, the, the ones that had something to say, or you know, or the stand up when we when they were doing these meetings, they were sent home. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, you know, the ruffling of the feathers, stuff like that. If that's the kind of environment that you are that you're presenting or that you're working with, then you're going to tend to not have people stand up, and you're going to tell people to have, have these tweets because I do think you're missing the overall point here. Especially about what's going on in women's wrestling. Right now, the AEW, the AEW division is not even better than the Knockouts division or Impact right now. It's just not. I don't and know. even though uh, I mean, cut you over again. Even though is not doing the greatest job with the women in WWE, they I still see them more on the screen than I do the AEW women. I just this. I don't know. I feel like part of this, I do feel like it's, pers- it's personal feeling because she clearly has a history with some of these women. Uh-huh. Um, but another part of this is I feel like this is one of those things where you've now caught more attention to it. So something that might have just died out 
and went away now because you sent everybody in on the attack it looks weird it could really be the most happy go lucky place in the back ever Mm -hmm. but to have everybody who is somebody in your women's division tweeting out how it's sunshine lollipops rainbows and apple drops it just seems I don't know it's just it seems odd and no it's it's not gonna be like that all the time it's very possible she could have just went in there uh, on a bad day day and and did not have a great experience Um, because like I said this is not like her full time job this is a a first impressions type of thing first impressions are big impressions but let me tell you as someone who went to an all girls high school Mm. there are some days when it's just like I'd rather be anywhere but here right now. And it's just rough. And there are other days where it's just like, I, you know, I really enjoy being here without the male gaze. Like, there are some days there was, it was a pendulum. Uh-huh. But even still, that still does not address the fact of the other things that were said that have been said by other people. I don't know. I just I just <coughs> feel like it's it's weird. Um, no, you have, said, to, you have to keep saying I don't know. I mean, we pretty we got a pretty good idea, and this this all stems with Tony Khan, and it's something that Tony Khan is going to have to try to look at and address because first of all, no matter what's going on and, and how pleasant the locker room is. Your women are not being featured. And I guess I, I am happy that you put the women in the main event at the, the 200 episode because, you know, y'all, you really do that. But, I mean, and it looks like it's more of a coincidence from when all this stuff was happening. But the women do need to be featured better on your programming. And now you have three episodes of programming. Dynamite, Collision, and Rampage. And the women need to be showcased more. And uh, I understand some go to Ring of Honor because I'm like, it's a crime that I don't know more about Athena right now. Yeah. It's a crime that I, you know I, I don't know much about that. But don't, that, that kind that kind of thing is very unfortunate. I did I did just want to you know talk about that. I, I'm going to talk more about it when I get when I read more information about it. Cause this is something that crossed my table and I was I was making the outline and I was like, I gotta I gotta talk about this. I gotta say something about this and get my personal opinion about it. But there's more to it. I know I it, this is more than just and like I say even with this transcript, this is just more than just a hey, I walked in and had a bad day at the office that day. It's more it's it, it's it's more than that of, of what of what's been going on and particularly that I won't read more of and I'm probably on next week's podcast, I'll probably gonna come back kicking myself because I should have read more into it. No, I mean, I, there's really, I don't think there's a whole lot more to read into it. There's two parts of this. She didn't have a great experience in the locker room. Um, and it didn't seem as if the women's wrestling was super organized when she was there.